and welcome to this new videos on our thermodynamics 2 series. Uh, today we will be talking about the Brayton cycle or also called the gas turbine cycle and specifically we're going to be talking about the fund fundamentals of that cycle. Uh, we're going to go through over um, the two representations of the same cycle in open system representation uh, where air continuously comes through the compressor and, and is exhausted at the end of the cycle back to atmosphere. Um, so the same fluid doesn't go through the entire system. Uh, and a closed representation of the same cycle where basically your working fluid is continuously recycled um, sort of in the same manner as um, it's done in the Rankine cycle with steam. Um, and uh, both of them are going to be modeled the same way thermodynamically. So it really doesn't matter what uh, symbolic um, representation we use for the cycle for the purpose of analysis. In real life, however, the open cycle is the way predominant form of the gas turbine cycle. Um, this is a fundamental presentation on these um, gas turbine cycles. So we'll talk about uh, some very basic uh, modeling tools that we're going to use to model them. And uh, we're going to introduce the two uh, the, or the main performance parameter with the Brayton cycle, and that is its thermal efficiency and what affects it. And finally, we'll briefly define the compressor isentropic efficiency and the turbine isentropic efficiency as important individual component performance parameters. So I hope you'll enjoy this, uh, this brief video here today. So um, let's get started by plotting the cycle on the respective PV and TS diagram. So again, these are the ideal cycle representations, meaning that we're going to assume ideal components here when we do this. Uh, let's start with the PV diagram and uh, let's label um, the uh, inlet to our compressor, which here in the ideal scenario is defined, is assumed to be isentropic, same with our turbine. Uh, the inlet to the compressor will be one, dot there and we're going to compress through this ideal component isentropically the air to a state two and, and remember that shape of that curve that's very familiar to you on a TS diagram because the process is isentropic entropy is constant that's a vertical line from one to two across a compressor next we're adding heat through the combustion chamber Q in in terms of energy or Q in dot in terms of rate and that's going to move us uh, at constant pressure from point two to point three. So the gas turbine cycle in the ideal representation has a lossless, pressure lossless combustion chamber where the flow is, um, uh, gets heat added to it without increasing pressure. So a horizontal line like a diesel cycle. Uh, on a TS diagram, this uh, follows the uh, isobar, which are these um, um, divergent curves on the TS diagram for an ideal gas, and we're going to follow that to uh, point three where it comes out. Finally, we're expanding through the turbine, also isentropically, so a vertical line on the TS diagram. And that is really where, uh, in real life, the cycle effectively ends. We're dumping the exhaust overboard, and we're sucking in new air. But we can represent this as, you know, having a very uh, powerful heat exchanger that cools down that air back to its original state point. And voila, that's the, the full cycle. Let's talk a little bit about the um, isentropic compression and expansion here. I'm going to change color here. Let's go with orange. Um, constant entropy process of an ideal gas, you'll recall, means that along that curve, PV to the gamma is constant, where gamma is the ratio of specific heat, CP over CV. A lot of your books use uh, K for that parameter, I prefer gamma. So uh, PV to the gamma is constant. And this is going to have an important effect on our analysis of the performance parameters. So let's pay a little bit of attention. It should be a bit of a review for you since you've seen this before. Uh, but what we're going to do here is express these pressure uh, endpoints, 1 and 2, and then 3 and 4, in terms of the temperatures at those points using this isentropic relationship to, be, to begin with. So P1, V1 to the gamma must be equal to P2, V2 to the gamma. And V, the specific volume, is equal to RT over P, since we're dealing with an ideal gas, right? So we'll substitute that back in. 
Remember that R here is the specific gas constant. It is not the universal gas constant. So it would be R sub U universal divided by the molecular mass of the gas we're dealing with here. Um, I'm putting the piece together here and rearranging everything, canceling out the R's. And um, voila, I've got the, uh, an, an expression that I hope you've seen before that relates the pressure to the temperature at both ends of the compression step and the expansion step in the full Brayton cycle process. We're going to call that equation one here in a moment. Uh, this particular observation, this analysis, is very important, a very important result that's going to come up in the thermal efficiency of the gas turbine, as we'll see in a moment. Uh, the thermal efficiency of the ideal gas turbine, that is um, cycle, the cycle. I should say this is uh, our domain performance parameter of the Brayton cycle. So uh, we're going to start from the basic definition of the thermal efficiency, which you'll recall is the net workout divided by the total heat in. And uh, on a rate basis, because we can apply L'Hopital's rule to this, uh, think of it as F of T divided by G of T. So the limits can work like the derivative of both, and that's going to give us rates. Um, here I'm highlighting the difference between work net, which is the difference between the work output of the turbine and the work input of the compressor. That's going to be my net work. So work between three and four minus the work between one and two. And for an ideal gas on a um, per mass basis, energy basis, that would be CP times the change in temperature for both of these components. So really what I'm looking at here is the rate of work out divided by the um, mass flow rate through the component, right? Similarly for the heat in, um, the rate of heat in is going to be Q dot divided by M dot, and that's going to be equal to uh, the specific uh, heat ratio divided, uh, the specific heat at constant pressure times the change in temperature in both cases. Okay. All right, so let's put that down for the heat in. So now we've got the network out and the net heat in and uh, from our first law analysis here this is the result of first law analysis for each of the components the cpts which are the enthalpies now can you show this can you go from line one to line two here to show these results uh, from basic principles here starting from the reynolds transport theorem this is something i expect you to be able to do at this point applying the first law to say uh, an individual component love to ask these kinds of questions to verify that you've mastered that concept. So here I jump right to the um, back to the end which is that uh, the work is equal to CP times delta T. All right now I'm finally applying that Lovetel's rule here to get myself into on a per mass uh, uh, sorry on a, a rate basis uh, because for gas turbines that's typically what we're doing right uh, unless we bracket a certain fixed amount of time we're really interested in what's going on uh, continuously. So those are the results for work out and work in, and now for heat in. Notice that we're dealing with a perfect gas here, so that means that my CPs are all the same, and so they get canceled out. So I end up with a ratio of temperatures, a much nicer result, which I'm going to arrange, rearrange here in a moment. And hopefully this is looking a little familiar to you, what I'm doing right now, uh, since you've done a similar exercise with the auto cycle, the ideal auto cycle before. So uh, let me pull out a T3 minus T2 on the top there uh, so that I'm able to do some cancellation with the denominator, T3 minus T2. So I'm going to have 1 minus this new ratio of temperatures. Again, that should look eerily familiar to you. I'm going to pull out T1 over T2 out of that. T1 on the top, T2 on the bottom. And wow, that looks just like the auto cycle. Um, and you can show, just like we did on that previous exercise, that uh, T4 over T1 is equal to T3 over T2. And that's going to make those bracketed terms disappear. They're going to do the derivation again for you. And terms and parentheses are all going to cancel out, and it's going to give us a much simpler result for the thermal efficiency of the cycle 
1 minus t1 over t2. Now, let's go back to that equation 1. Here it is. Uh, let's put our equation 1 next to it. Equation 1 uh, relates that temperature to the pressure, and that's really what we're most interested in quantifying here in these cycles is the pressure for the gas turbine. So, um, rearranging equation 1, that gives us this fabulous results for the thermal efficiency of the entire cycle in terms of the pressure ratio across the compressor only. So that pressure ratio across the compressor is for the gas turbine what the compression ratio R, the letter R, which was equal to the volume at top center divided by the volume at bottom center. So that ratio across compressor is just as important as the compression ratio. So V T sub C over V bottom center, oops, V bottom center in the reciprocating engine. Now, of course, the relationship is not the same, but the parameter itself is just as important within the relationship. So keep that in mind. R, compression ratio for reciprocating engines, P1 over P2, or P2 over P1, the pressure ratio for gas turbine engines. All right, so you've got it. This is the uh, thermal efficiency, the very important thermal efficiency for a gas turbine. So now let's talk about the individual component efficiencies, not thermal efficiencies, but the component efficiency of the turbine itself, eta sub t, and that's an isentropic efficiency. And uh, it's defined as a ratio of enthalpies, which is really the ratio of work done, the work done by the turbine in real life for the real turbine divided by the ideal work done by the turbine if it was an isentropic turbine. So um, it's easiest to see it on a TS diagram. So why don't I plot a little uh, TS diagram here and uh, I will include the isobars again that are diverging for, for an ideal gas, air. And this is my ideal expansion from the inlet to the outlet of the turbine. Ideal, I know it's ideal because it's happening at constant entropy, so there's no losses. In real life, however, I'm gonna move a little bit to the right, and so I'm not gonna have quite the same expansion in terms of enthalpy, and so therefore not quite as much work as I could ideally get. And that ratio is what's gonna define the, the isentropic efficiency of the turbine itself. So eta sub t is equal to work actual, which is H4 actual minus H3, divided by H4 ideal minus H3. So that's uh, C, if I make a substitution now for my ideal gas, and since I have a perfect gas, the CPs are going to cancel, and I have a nice, clean um, ratio of temperatures. Okay? Could have written a T3 minus T4A and T3 minus T4I as well, of course. Um, so I have positive numbers there. Uh, similarly for the compressor, the exact same thing, the isentropic efficiency of the compressor uh, is going to be the ratio of the ideal work required um, to compress the air from P1 to P2 divided by the actual work required to do the same thing. Um, so it's reversed from what it was for the turbine because now the um, actual work required is higher than the ideal one. So I'm going to put the ideal one on the numerator. That's why H2 sub i is on top. Uh, and H2 sub a is on the bottom. The CPs are going to cancel again. I'm going to end up with the very same, uh, or very similar expression in terms of temperature. But now with the ideal and actual temperatures reverse or inverted in terms of where they are on the fraction. And so that's it. Uh, those are three important performance parameters for gas turbine cycles. The thermal efficiency of the gas turbine cycle itself, which is a, a equation two above, and the isentropic efficiency of both the turbine and the compressor, which I violated here. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care and have a nice day. See you next time.